Anna did not bother to verify the truth of the allegations. Gertrude simply stated, I don't care what you do to Sylvia. She welcomed Anna into her home and observed as Anna violently attacked Sylvia, throwing her to the ground, hitting her face and kicking her. Gertrude informed her own children that Sylvia engaged in prostitution. Subsequently, she instructed Ricky Hobbs, a boy from the neighborhood, and her 11-year-old daughter Marie to use a heated needle to carve the words I'm a prostitute and proud of it into Sylvia's abdomen. At one juncture, Sylvia's older sister Diana attempted to visit the girls who were under Gertrude's care, but she was denied entry at the door. Jenny later recounted how Diana managed to sneak food into the basement where Sylvia was being hidden. A neighbor had also reported these incidents to a public health nurse. However, upon entering the residence and not finding Sylvia, who was locked in the basement, the nurse concluded that nothing was amiss. Banisevsky had also successfully convinced the nurse that she had expelled the Lycans girls from her home. Other neighbors living nearby were purportedly aware of the abuse Sylvia endured. They had witnessed Paula striking the girl on two separate occasions within the Banisevsky household. However, they chose not to report the abuse out of fear for their own safety. Jenny, too, faced threats, bullying, and physical assault from both the Banizhevsky family and the neighboring girls if she were to seek help from the authorities. The relentless abuse inflicted upon Sylvia persisted without any hindrance, and tragically, it was even facilitated by those around her. The Brutal Death of Sylvia Likens I'm going to die, Sylvia told her sister three days before she did. I can tell. Gertrude's discernment was evident, prompting her to coerce Sylvia into composing a letter, informing her parents of her supposed decision to run away. In this note, Sylvia was compelled to falsely claim that she had engaged in sexual acts with a group of boys, who subsequently subjected her to physical violence and mutilation. Shortly thereafter, Sylvia overheard Gertrude Banisevsky revealing her sinister plan to her own children to abandon Sylvia in a forest, leaving her to perish. In a desperate bid for freedom, Sylvia, despite her weakened state from the inflicted injuries, managed to escape through the front door. However, her attempt was short-lived as Gertrude apprehended her. Overwhelmed by her injuries, Sylvia could not have possibly ventured too far. With the assistance of a neighbor boy named Coy Hubbard, Gertrude ruthlessly assaulted Sylvia with a curtain rod until she lost consciousness. Upon regaining consciousness, Gertrude proceeded to brutally stomp on Sylvia's head. Sylvia passed away on October 26, 1965, due to a brain hemorrhage, shock, and malnutrition. After enduring three months of torment and starvation, she lost the ability to speak coherently and could hardly move her limbs. When the authorities arrived, Gertrude maintained her fabricated story. She claimed that Sylvia had been attacked by boys in the woods and brutally killed, with the words, I'm a prostitute and proud of it, carved into her body. However, Jenny took a different approach. She seized the opportunity to approach a police officer and whispered, Help me escape from here, and I will reveal everything. Subsequently, Gertrude, Paula, Stephanie, John Banaszewski, Richard Hobbs, and Coy Hubbard were arrested for murder. Additionally, neighborhood individuals Mike Monroe, Randy Lepper, Darlene Maguire, Judy Duke, and Anna Sisko faced charges of injury to person. These miners pointed fingers at Gertrude for pressuring them to participate in Sylvia Lycan's tragic fate. Gertrude pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, with her defense attorney arguing that she was not mentally sound. Despite the involvement of several other children who were deemed too young to be prosecuted, Gertrude Banaszewski was ultimately found guilty of first-degree murder on May 19, 1966, and received a life sentence. Paula Banaszewski, who had a child during the trial, was convicted of second-degree murder and also sentenced to life imprisonment. 
Richard Hobbs, Coy Hubbard, and John Banasiewski Jr. were convicted of manslaughter and received two to twenty-one year prison terms due to their status as minors. Surprisingly, the three boys were paroled just two years later in 1968. Gertrude spent twenty years behind bars. There was no question about her guilt. The autopsy backed up everything Jenny told the police. Sylvia Likens had died slowly and painfully over several months. In 1971, Gertrude and Paula underwent a retrial, leading to Gertrude being convicted once again. Paula, on the other hand, admitted guilt to a reduced charge of voluntary manslaughter and received a sentence of two to twenty-one years. Despite being recaptured, she successfully escaped at one point. Following approximately eight years of I, 